Hey you guys, welcome to another training game. And I have uh, a 15 plus 10 unrated game up and my opponent is Paul Rees, Jess Bootcamp club member. Uh, and he's opened with E4. Now normally I'm playing the Scandinavian against this, but let's do something. I'm going to play the Karakhan. I don't know the Karakhan. So this is not a a video about the Karakhan, but um, it's just an idea. So uh, the point is, we want to get into playing chess, and I don't want I don't want to you know, trick Paul or get any any kind of early advantage. The point is about chess principles. So the idea of the Karakhan defense very very basic. Black wants to play d5 and challenge this pawn, and if the pawn captures, you want to recapture with a wing pawn, thereby uh, keeping the central pawn majority and black would only have the d pawn left. That's the idea. Alrighty, now, so he's developed a second knight, he's ignored the offered pawn. So we've got a, a few options here. One is to take, in which case he, re he can recapture with the knight. And then I've swapped a central pawn for another central pawn. And I've put his knight into, into the center, which is these four squares. And he will then have two developed pieces, and I, I will have none. So what's the point? Is there any benefit to black of capturing this pawn? I would say nope. That makes sense. And pushing is another idea. So if we push, for example, now that comes with tempo. The knight can't come here, can't come here. That's bad. Can't go there. So he's either going to have to go all the way back home, which he won't want to do, or he's going to have to go here and block off the bishop. This knight can't capture because it's defended by my queen, he would lose a piece, so that's what I'm going to do. Bentley is asleep on the sofa, so if you can hear gentle snoring, it's my fat dog. Okay, now we have two attackers on this pawn, only one defender. This is the current situation, and one issue with the caro is the queen's knight can't come out to c6, which is its natural square. Uh, so what do I do? Are we going to have to give up the pawn? Or do I push c5 and defend with a, another pawn? That's what I'm going to do in this case. I, that's a really strong pawn. It's in, in the middle of the board. It's got white in a bit of a thumb lock. I don't know if this is correct, but it, that feels okay. Also notice, this knight's blocking off this bishop. So I'm not worried about either the queen coming out or the bishop coming out and checking my king. Not too much of an issue anyway. I can always block with knight or bishop or queen. So that's okay. And it feels a little bit like, yeah, Paul is now in a bit of a, bit of a, a bind here. And okay, so he's trying to resolve the tension. Do I push again? I'm pushing again. This is insane. I've, I, I don't know how this works. Um, and I've broken all the rules because I've still got all my my stuff is still undeveloped but this is a tactical opportunity or a series of tactical opportunities Okay, now I can push c4 and really clamp down on his position then what's he going to do? Is he going to do that? but then I've got b5 so I think I think that I don't want I don't want to allow his bishop to take having said that was defended by the queen anyway so Maybe I could have taken the opportunity to go mad and actually develop some minor pieces. So, now it's time to think about where my stuff's going to go. This is locked off right now. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, another pawn move. Wow. Wow. This is move seven. Normally now you're thinking about castling. Okay, and takes again. There comes the queen. Okay, now he's got a fork on here. So has anything been gained with this? Uh, I'd like to put my bishop there if the queen goes there. So I think this, then if queen takes, I've got bishop a6 and I've finally developed a minor piece. And what's more, because it's defended by the knight, you see, Defended by the knights, and I've got two defenders on here. Because that was the other issue, is that I could have lost the other pawn. Uh, 
need to be conscious that this rook is undefended. Queen comes here, I might just trade off, I don't know. We'll see. But you can see now that I, I just very, very much overextended what I was doing there. And I'm behind in development, right? I've got... Having said that, I, I, I do have a tempo because Paul is now going to have to move his queen. This is the one I'm worried about. Queen there, we pretty much have to trade off, do we? Or, or bishop back. But then he might take me, but then I get to develop my knight and open up my rook at the same time. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't initiate the exchange. I don't know. Hmm. It's a very weird start to the game. Very unprincipled start as well. So I think here we're in a situation where we've got two two attackers, one defender. I should probably have just pushed there, but then if e5, I'd have to come back. But then that's one attacker that's disappeared off there. So there, probably there, and knight back here, I would imagine. I have got knight there, that's a thought. But I did this. And really what I've done is I've very, very much overextended myself, <laughs> very much here with three pawns and two of them deep in my opponent's side of the board, so pointless. Ultimately, okay, and now here we are. Glad it's unrated, eh? So he can't take there, he can't take there, he can't take with a bishop. So he doesn't have that many choices. He can go here or here or here. Um, he could go there and he could go there. And he could go there, but that's going to walk into a bishop attack near these squares. Well, um, the queen's got quite a few options here. All these squares potentially. How do I feel about that one as well? See, my queen's defended right now by the knight and the king. I suspect Paul's going to go to one of these two squares. Probably this one. And if I take, he gets to capture towards the centre, maybe. A very, very weird opening, but... So I've not been playing very well today. Okay, he's retreated. Right, he's retreated. Now I'm tempted to move my knight here and then maybe hit the queen one more time. Don't see much value in that. Okay, I'm gonna play this knight move now. Then I've got rook here, so he's defended by the knight. Hits the queen. And then where's she gonna go? She could still go here. Maybe I need to develop my knight. Maybe even e5 is, is a thought as well. Defended by knight. Um, I should really be thinking about some kind of control of the centre, seeing as I've, uh, I'm not going to have any pawns in, in the centre for very long. Having said that, this pawn is not too bad. It is defended twice right now. And it really is going to be sticking in White's throat because he can't develop his bishop right now. So he can't get his king to safety and the king ain't going queenside. No way. The king's going to have to go there if he's going to release his, his rook as well. He does have a nice defensive setup with the two knights. I, I'm a big fan of that configuration. I might even consider Fianchettoing my own bishop. I, I wasn't going to for a while, but then it does pin this guy. There's only one pawn, because otherwise the rook will fall. So I might, I might even think about a Fianchetto, King's Indian defense kind of structure there. My opponent's taking his time. No, I'm, I'm taking his time to think as well. I wouldn't say this is a masterclass in uh, opening, principled opening play. 
not by any means. Right, he took three minutes 13 over his last move. Okay. Okay. What is the purpose of this? Right, one attacker, two defenders. So I'm all right there. The knight is kind of pinned. Um, I think this looks sensible. If he pushes, though, so here this defends the queen, so I can recapture if my knight moves. But my knight doesn't have to move, and there's no pawn that can move my knight. So is he thinking about coming in here? No, he can't, because I take, and queen takes, and my knight recaptures. That's this kind of boomerang capture thing. Okay, I'm going to play this. Might prompt him to do that. But then I can come there. Oh, then... No, it's still defended by the bishop. So here, knight here. Then I've got this as well. Really make life difficult for Her Majesty. Notice that, I'm just looking at the moves now. Move 9, 10, 11, and 12, white moved is queen. That's four queen moves. And that's what you get for bringing your queen out early. Having said that, one of them was a pawn capture. But now, so yeah, he's got, he's definitely got a problem with his bishop. This bishop only has a couple of squares. Okay, knight comes in. Now, I'm not convinced by that, because I was planning on playing g6 anyway. Now I can just play g6 and kick the knight. Can't go there or there, because bishop takes. Can't go there, because pawn or queen takes. Could go there. No, he can't, because bishop takes again. So that's what I'm going to do. This is my plan anyway. And um, Paul's just kind of walked into it, really, and invited me to, to play it. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, all right, so maybe that was the idea all along. All right. Now, hang on. Oh, oh, Paul. Look, look at Jellyhead here, hung his bishop. And you missed it, mate. And so did I. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So here, he had, he had Queen takes bishop. Winning move. Now I think I can um, simply retire my bishop to here as a second defender on that. Okay, got away with that one. Everyone's there spitting their cocoa pops at the computer. I told you I was playing badly today. So I recorded a video earlier on about um, about blitz and. Something I picked up this week, I actually got this from Christina, who uh, sent me a game to look at, and I noticed that the game was a five plus five. So it's a five minute starting clock with a five second increment on each move. Um, I'm gonna tell him that he missed the bishop. Um, and I think it's interesting, and the video is about kind of a recommendation that if you want to play Blitz, if you want to play for fun, if you want to practice openings, that kind of thing, then five plus five makes an awful lot more sense than just playing a straight five, a hard five. Because there's a couple of things. The one is that the increment, oh, by the way, this is now hanging, oh, completely undefended, right? So he can go up now two pawns. But I kind of like my structure. Anyway, so um, a couple of things. One is, you get a little bit longer, which means that you get at least five seconds for every move, which means you have no excuse not to do a sanity check on every move. Um, right, I'm going to play that. Okay. He sent a crying emoji that he missed the hanging bishop. It's all a learning process, Paulio. Don't you worry. Okay, now, I'm down two pawns. I was nearly down a bishop as well. 
but fortunately my opponent is just as dumb as me today. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, one thing, you get that little bit longer for a sanity check, okay? So that makes a 5 plus 5 a bit more like a 10-minute rapid. So if you like playing 10-minute rapid, but you want to play and you don't want to risk your, um, your rating, play 5 plus 5. And you can always play that like a 10-minute rapid, because there's no reason why a 5 plus 5 with the increment couldn't actually be a 15-minute game. So I, I think that's one good idea. And the other one is, as with anything with an increment, it forces you to win or not to lose or whatever. So when there's a, a, an increment, even a five second, then very often, if you can get into an ending with a winning position, you should be able to win. So that means that you don't get to dirty flag your opponent in the same way, okay? So, Paul's castled. No justification for takes trading knights. Uh, how do we feel? So I'm missing three pawns. He's missing only one. He's got quite good development. Pawn structure is a bit haphazard, has to be said. I can't see any reason not to simply to castle now. Hang on, is he is he thinking about this? Would I be worried? Should I play that and then castle? Okay, let's say I castle, he plays bishop to here. He's then got three attackers on that knight. Okay, I'm just going to shut his bishop out. This is a prophylactic move. I don't want this bishop coming in there. Currently there, it's kind of stuck behind a pawn. I can't play that, which I'd like to do. I'd like to shut this pawn up. Maybe, actually, e5. e5 now before castling. For e5, can't go there. e5, he'll, he might take. That actually improves my bishop. Or takes, knight takes an e5, is another idea. Hmm. He's down on time now. Paul, you need to shake a leg, mate. Now this game has an increment, so this, this is 15 plus 10. So what Paul needs to do, if it, if it was me, I'd be looking at opportunities to trade down so that he gets to go into an ending with a two-point advantage. Now two-point advantage plus a time increment should be enough. But at the same time, he's probably thinking he wants to avoid getting into tactical pickles. So I don't hate my position right now. And the other thing that I can think about is um, trying somehow to make, to turn my lack of pawns here into an advantage. Because what that means is that there is space, you know, I've got open lines on B, C, D. Okay, he's moved his rook there. He might be thinking about this now. I bet he is. So, I could preempt by that. That's what I'm going to do. And he's run away. Okay, now this knight's just become worse. It was in the centre. It now is no longer in the centre. So now I castle. Yep, not worried about this. It's defended once. Actually, it's not. He should take that, because my knight can't recapture. Oh, no, no, my queen is defended by the knight. That's all right. Okay, now back he comes. Didn't I didn't look at that. I did not look at that. Does he want a piece of my bishop? Well, he wants a piece of my queen, so I've got to move the queen. Here... Defends the bishop. I've got to defend the bishop as well. I've got three moves. They're all pretty much the same. If he's going to take the bishop, he's going to take the bishop, and my queen's going to end up on b7. So, down to six minutes twelve. 
there is a risk when you're playing against somebody who's higher rated than you that you fail to scan the board properly because you don't expect them to screw up. Expect them to screw up, right? Well, don't bank on it, but, but be open. I, I made a whole video on this the other week. Um, always be open to the fact that your opponent may have just done something really stupid. Because we do. Everybody does. All right, so I have no light squared bishop. Rook's attacking my queen. What are the weaknesses? That's defended. Rook's defended. Yeah. Everything is actually defended on white side of the board, apart from his queen. So what do, and my pawn, I've just moved my pawn right in the way of my fianchetto bishop, but it's not the end of the world. Okay, bottom line is I have to move my queen and it has to be sideways. So I don't fancy putting it back on here and leaving the knight pinned, but I also do have to defend the knight. So I'm gonna stick my queen here. And then I want to think about improving this knight. I'm not altogether sure how though. He's also now got an overwhelm on this, you see. So he should, sim but, but if he does take that, then um, he has pinned his own bishop against his own queen, which might not be too clever. So for example, I could then drop my queen in here. Could I? And that drops the knight. So no. Could maybe double up my rooks on the A file and try and win the bishop. Because he hasn't got, this bishop can't defend it. This rook can't defend it. Um, the knight is too far away and can't make progress to the center. Ooh, there's all kinds of things going on. So knight's looking at this, it's defended only by that. Hmm. So maybe I need to move this knight so the bishop defends e5. Still thinking about bringing my other knight round. I mean, it seems a bit weird because I'm moving it well away from my opponent's king. Okay. Let's go here and attack this bishop. I think if we've got any chance of winning this game, I need to keep pressure on the clock. Right, so I'm moving quickly, even though I've got 10 minutes on the clock, but I'm trying to grind down my opponent's time. He's down to 4.35 now. But even so, if he can get in to the ending with that 10 second increment, he should do fine. He should be able to finish me off. Right, so he's gone for this, good, good. Uh, now, how do I attack the bishop? How about knight there? Does that work? Let's hover. I think it works. He might have to trade his rook for, for the knight. Otherwise, the bishop simply falls. And maybe even the one behind it too, which wouldn't be nice. He doesn't have this, I'll just snatch it off. Okay. So was that kind of a honeypot trap, really? See, what you have to notice is the queen is undefended. I mean, it doesn't really make much difference if Rook's gonna take it anyway, but yeah. Capturing in front of that effectively pins the bishop. And that, I think, is the way to attack it. I don't have this. I've got to keep this bishop in mind. Wow. What's the idea with that, mate? I think I can just take the rook. I take rook. He has to take... Well, he doesn't have to take the queen. If I take the rook. If he, if he captures my queen, he loses his queen, yeah? And I've won myself a rook. Is there a better option? He's not going to stick his rook in there. It's a free rook, right? Free rook. So what this is, is a free capture when the opponent is pinned. Sorry, when the defender is pinned. So this is a pinned piece. 
So putting his rook on here with that move, it's defended by a pinned piece. Therefore, I capture, and the pinned piece can't recapture without losing the queen. So I think I might have just uh, regained equality in this game, which I honestly did not deserve. So this is tactics. Um, and this is what we are drilling in the, particularly in, in my, my group in Chess Bootcamp Live, is the 750 to 1000, the breakthrough group. Where we are training people to break through 1000. Um, so what we're doing sub 750 is, is basics, is, is like your one move blunders, right? Um, checking what's defended, what's not defended. Um, sanity checks, all of, all of that stuff, and that's with Christina. So with a 750 to 1000, I'm now drilling tactics on a, um, a weekly basis with this group. So particularly one move and two move tactics, and, and this is a perfect example, right? So you really want to, to get to 1000 and beyond, you want to be, um, you need to get to this point where all the basic tactics, your forks, your pins, removing the defender, um, skewers, that kind of thing, um, needs to be start. You need to be starting to recognise them quite quickly. So this one, for example, I mean, you can see what what Paul's thinking. He's thinking, I, I'll come in here, I'll, I'll attack the queen and get rid of that piece but so the way that you need to think about it is well my rook on here is my rook defended yes right what's it defended by the bishop but knowing that the bishop is pinned that's a problem and now i've actually got three attackers on there okay so we, we've gone for the trade of queens and now i'm actually up bizarrely um i'm up a rook for three pawns so i'm plus two I'm attacking, okay. Now this is a fork, but it's not a meaty fork um, because A, this knight's defended. The other problem is that I can now fork both bishops, which is good for me. Because now on the next move, I can now win a bishop. If he, if he captures there, I'll probably take that one and all trades are good for me right now. Also got hanging pawn there. Um, everything else is defended here, that's okay. Just good discipline, just to scan the board and see what's defended or not. That's the only undefended, well that's, and, and these are both undefended. So, is Paul going to trade a bit? He shouldn't be trading right now. However, what else has he got? Okay, that might give his bishop an escape square here. So I, I'm going to go ahead and capture there. Um, we've got tension between these guys. What's he going to do? What he should do is run away. He's got three squares he can run away to. He doesn't... Okay, okay well, he's grabbed a pawn. All right. So I'm going to trade off. I'm not going to think twice about that. Uh, let's grab a pawn. I'm just sanity checking. That's okay. I've got nice control over both open files now, which is good for me. And he's down to 55 seconds. That's undefended. Now it's defended. All right. Um, okay. I'm going to put my king here. Just because my opponent's only minor piece now is a knight. And notice that when you've got this pattern, when you've got a diamond or a triangle of pawns, get your king in the middle, because now the knight can't check anywhere from the front. The only way it could check would be from here, right? See, these three checking squares. Okay, I'm gonna play h5 and stop. Hold the process of that pawn. I'm up a full rook now, but my opponent does have a bunch of pawns. Therefore, 
what he should be doing with 38 seconds on the clock but a 10 second increment no not that not that Paul what you need to be doing is throwing these pawns up the board all right this is your advantage my advantage is I have an extra rook okay the, your advantage is you've got three extra pawns so use your advantage press it okay I'm going to start bringing my knight back towards my opponent's king it's doing nothing in that corner of the board and now he's down to 40 seconds so time and speed of calculation is going to be critical okay this I'll just check it's not a mistake if it's not a mistake I'll play it I have a check okay so I'm just storing that this knight can't move because it's got to defend this pawn I could even double up rooks but Paul again mate this is your move push the pawn All right now I'm gonna come here 30 seconds I might double up my rooks on the second rank I don't know good good this is exactly what you need to do All right, how about this then We'll put this rook there. 30 seconds again. Uh, that's a blunder though. Because that pawn was blocking there. So the question is, what do I capture with? Now, we had this actually. We've had some examples of this. So anyone on Chess Bootcamp Live will recognize this. Capturing with the piece that doesn't give check can be more powerful because now I, that gives me another tactic. It gives me a discovered check idea. So, for example, knight here hits the rook with check, wins the rook. If the rook blocks, takes and wins the game. So the right idea, pushing the pawns up the board, but wrong pawn. Okay. Now. Move, moving my knight means that the king is now stuck on the back rank, which is cool. Happy about that. Um, so where does my knight want to go? There or there? There hits the rook probably prompt that and from there he doesn't really have anywhere to go because all of these squares are covered by the pawns um, I'll come here then I'm not entirely convinced by that move I, I have a check but it's not very, doesn't have much point. I mean, king goes there then. Um, I have a check with the knight. Again, king goes there. Oh, okay. All right, now. Um, if I go here, pawn takes a check. I recapture with the king. That's okay. I'm, I'm trying to get rid of this knight so that I have this idea with a fork on king and rook. If the knight moves... See, like that. Okay, there you go. Now I have a check. And because the rook is covering all of this, the king only has one square. King has to go there. And then I go there and I win the rook. See? Perfect. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Yep. Yeah. And we just win the rook, yeah. And now I've got two rooks. Now I can sacrifice everything for one. He should push here. Definitely not take. Because if he takes, rook takes and the knight's pinned. And it's the end of the game. But I think... I think I got lucky, Paul. I played like a dick in the opening. That was a real patser opening from me pushing all those pawns forward it's a great example of what not to do 
You took advantage of it. Now this comes with check, discovered check. So it's a free pawn. You took advantage and um, what you failed to do was notice my mistake. Okay, now King here pins his own knight. So now I can come here and I effectively win the knight. Oh, it's resigned. Okay. Yeah. Good game. Good game. So, um, yeah. Right. So let's go through it again. In fact, let's look at the game review. And the computer's going to spank me now. It's going to say, you are a patser. You played the opening like a champion, dick. Don't do it again. Oh, ouch. Okay. It, well, that is a game of two halves, boys and girls. All right, so, book move. And that's already inaccurate. Okay, and I'm already given white plus one. Yeah, there we go. And that's what I said I should have done. Right, that's best. That's best. A another inaccuracy. And now he's plus 1.7. What's it, what's it want to do? Knight there, maybe. And that's a blunder. And that's a blunder. And that's an... Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. So here I'm guessing it's probably wants queen out straight away, yeah? Yeah. So let's just win the, win the pawn and then put two attackers on here. Okay, so let's carry on. Just, I just keep digging my myself a hole here. That's a great move. In fact, it's the only good move, so well done for finding that. And here you're plus two already, because your opponent's a fool. Okay, best move, he's plus three now. Best move, great move. That's best, hey! Happy with that. So I did kind of redeem myself slightly here. That's best. Um, and that's a mistake. Yes, it loses a piece because I hung my bishop. Oh dear. And now it's down to plus one because Paul missed the, the hanging bishop, right? Always be open to the possibility that your opponent is a dummy and at the same time expect them to play the best moves and the strongest moves, but always say, did my opponent just do something really, 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 really dumb? Okay, well, here we both have. And that's a blunder because my bishop's still hanging. And that's a missed win. Basically, capturing the bishop at that point would have been pretty much winning, would it? So he's actually saying, the, the machine's saying, take the bishop and give up the knight. Anyway. So he comes there, and that's a mistake. Why? I saved my bishop. Okay. Wow. Um, so bishop b7 is a mistake because Well, that's an interesting sequence. Okay, so because of rook b1, rook there. If I take, yeah. Well, that isn't how it transpired in the game. So that's okay. That's a mistake. The better move was. Well, then we're just going to trade queens off, right? Yeah, that's kind of funky. Castling into space. Hmm. Any rod. That's not, that's not what we got. There's so lots and lots of inaccurate play there. 
That's a mistake. Gosh, losing material, why? Okay, so I've got two pieces looking at a pawn there. That, that's all he's talking about. Oh, dear, oh dear. That's inaccurate. God. Guys, you've really wasted your time watching this video if you're expecting good chess, because apparently we were both complete morons. E5 is excellent. Okay, I'm now threatening to win material. Okay. Mistake. Gives away free material. Why? <gasps> no. Ah. Oh. And I missed it. Oh, my. Guys, unsubscribe. Okay, and now, yeah, nice. 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 Good. Not bad. And yeah, you see, it's so tempting, looks like free stuff, but it's actually a blunder. And that was a great move. There was only one good move and you found it. And from that point, it uh, all goes a bit south for Paul. But wow, I mean, guys, what can I say, right? I just, we are both guilty of, with that, he literally hung a bishop, and I missed it. But there is a lesson in all of this, which is keep your bloody eyes open, right? Look at the whole board, look at everything that changed. We've got a 10 min, sorry, 10 second increment on this. No excuse not to scan the whole board. It doesn't take 10 seconds to scan the board. It takes like one. What changed? Ah. The bishop hangs. He's still actually plus two at this point. He's, he's still actually winning. Um, so there you go. I mean, look, the great thing about the Chess Bootcamp channel is that people get to sit there at home and go, ha ha, you missed this, you missed that, you missed the other, and then type it in the comments and say, yeah, you missed something stupid. And it's like, yeah. But it's all good fun, it's all good entertainment. Um, uh, that you know, my channel is for is for beginners improving players, and that's the way it is. So, not a uh, a tour de force of wonderful chess by any stretch of the imagination, but I hope it's been instructive, and I've certainly learned a lesson. You know, I've learned this lesson. I need to scan the board on every move, and sometimes we need to learn these lessons again and again and again um, until they start to stick. You know, so there you go. That's 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 it, Paul. Thank you, my friend, for the game. Enjoyed it. Hope it's been instructive for you. Hope it's been instructive for you at home as well. And I'll see you all soon.